we're doing it. <laughs> Hello and happy 2023. Yes, it's 2023. Happy 2023. Uh, my name is Genevieve and I am usually reading. So this is Genevieve is reading. Welcome. I haven't uploaded in a while and I you know, life, this is a hobby. So I upload when I can. I actually recorded a video already of how I felt about half of the books, uh, that I'm about to talk about today. Of course I never uploaded it. I've recorded several videos. I haven't uploaded. It just is what it is. I am chaos uh, incarnate. So we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> That's my excuse. But today I really want to talk about all of the book of the month books from 2022. I read all of the main picks. Um, I did have some that I DNF'd. Uh, that was my rule this year. I did not force myself to finish a handful of these. Uh, not as many as you'd think though. I actually finished most of them and I want to talk about how I felt about every single one of them and uh, essentially attempt to rank them in the best way possible. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I have the book of the month website here, and this is actually January of this year. So 2023. So I'm just going to scroll past this, but, uh, I'll be honest. I don't know if I'm going to do this for 2023. I never usually make up my mind until about March anyway. <laughs> so I just don't know if I want to keep doing this. <laughs> I am asked why I do this. Uh, I have been a member of Book of the Month for many years now. I think I'm going on six years. Yeah, seven years, actually. This is my seventh year getting Book of the Month. I've never skipped a box before. Um, I've always gotten something for the month. And uh, I don't know. I just like how it's sort of this sampling of a variety of different things. And I like to read a variety of different things. I am not going to go into my stats in this video, but I will say that I mostly in 2022 enjoyed a lot of fantasy and a lot of horror and a lot of literary fiction. Uh, book of the month is good at one of those. <laughs> so, uh, but I find that I always read something that I would not have read if book of the month hadn't put it on my radar. And for that, I am grateful. Um, I feel like they're really good about debuts and they also, for the most part, uh, have like one or two books that are available early. Uh, and it, I don't know, it feels zeitgeisty and I, I just enjoy that aspect of it. Um, is it the best subscription box? It's the best one for me. That's how I feel about that. Um, I've also gotten the fairy loot adult box recently, and I haven't actually read any of the ones that I've gotten yet. That's like my goal for 2023 is to read through all of those. So maybe I'll start reviewing those. I don't know. But for today, we're going to be talking about book of the month. So let's get started with that. All right. I am going to be doing this in chronological order. So I'm going to start with January, 2022, which feels like 10 million years ago. I was playing horizon, uh, for bidden West. Yes. Horizon for bidden West and listening to some of these as audiobooks. Um, wow. Gosh, it's a year ago, literally feels like 10 years ago at this point. So yeah. Okay. Uh, black cake, love and other disasters, reckless girls, Fiona and Jane and the Magnolia palace. Um, and I think there actually might be an extra one. No, this was the year that they decided to add on more than just five choices, which I think is a very good call on their part. I think the past two years, they have really struggled on picking books that everybody was excited about. There were definitely months where if you looked at the fan groups, people were just pissed as hell uh, that X, Y, Z book wasn't chosen. Why wasn't this picked up? Da, 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 da. So I think like them having more options is always better. Um, they had two debuts, which is interesting because I think Anita Kelly has published other books, but I don't think they were by a major publisher. So this is, I guess, her big debut. Um, Love and Other Disasters was fantastic. Uh, Fiona and Jane was quite good. I enjoyed that. It's interesting that they called the short stories. I mean, they technically are, but they're all linked by the same characters that are in all of them. It was a really unique, cool book uh, that, uh, you know, it's kind of a smaller story of friendship over a long period of time. Uh, this is great on audio, I found. I really enjoyed it on audio. And uh, I don't like when things are called millennial because that tends to mean something very specific that I think is leaving out a lot of people that would qualify as a millennial that aren't because of reasons. 
but this had a, I felt that I related a lot to the time period that this took place in some of the instances that these characters found themselves in. Um, and so it was very relatable to me being, I think roughly the age of these women in this book. So I, I guess it, I am a millennial and it spoke to me on that level. So I guess it is inherently millennial. There you go. Uh, let's see. Black cake was considered a contemporary fiction, which is interesting to me because it is contemporary, but it's also historical to get there. I, anyway, I, I did enjoy it. I don't think I loved it as much as everybody else loved it. Uh, but that's not to say I didn't like it. I did, I did enjoy my time with it. It's so black cake is the story of, uh, a mother who has lived a life that her children don't know that she has lived essentially. And she has passed and has left uh, this cake behind for her kids. And she wants her kids to come to her house and read a letter that her uh, estate, the executor of her estate um, has left her kids. And there are secrets in there that she reveals to them that uh, are pretty intense. So, uh, and it kind of tells her story of kind of how she wound up becoming the woman that she was, which I love a story like that. And I really enjoyed this one for that reason. Um, and then it's interspersed with her two children and the sort of their experiences being raised by a woman that they clearly didn't know as well as they thought they did. So, uh, love all of that family secrets, uh, you know, cool, like character being in history at different times. Um, she is from, uh, a Caribbean Island and I do not remember which one it is. It, I have not looked up any of these books since I've read them. So this is all just my impressions from having read it literally a year ago. So please forgive me for my ignorance. But I think that, uh, what I liked a lot about Black Hake is how, uh, it, it really transported me to a different place, a different time, revealed secrets of a character that made her, her story was really harrowing and really interesting. And uh, I love seeing one person from multiple people's point of view. And so also seeing her from her children's point of view is interesting and cool. So, um, but I would say that of these, Love and Other Disasters is probably my favorite. Um, it is a queer romance that also takes place on a reality television competition, which I loved. I thought the characters were extremely three-dimensional, which for some reason I've been really struggling with a lot of specifically um, sapphic and or uh, romances involving non-binary characters. I've, for some reason, I feel like some are just not, uh, they just didn't do what this did and I loved it. Uh, I would read more from Anita Kelly. She ha Again, she has some books on um, Amazon that I bought just, I think they're, they might be like self-published ones from the past. Anyway, I downloaded literally all of them. So I plan to read all of those. Um, the reckless girls was fine. It is exactly what it looks like and it does exactly what you think it's going to do. So if like, we all need those books, we all need those extremely boilerplate, uh, you know, thriller re mysteries where, you know, in this case, a woman, uh, is in a relationship with this guy who <laughs> this guy who is always saying he's going to like fix this boat and do stuff or whatever. And she's working some dead end job. The, the beginning of the book was really funny. The way she gets fired is kind of like, Oh my goodness. Um, and they wind up both being hired to take these girls, these young women on, uh, to an Island and they decide to do that and things happen. It is totally not memorable beyond that and doesn't need to be and is fine. I will read a Rachel Hawkins thriller when they come out as it's like the perfect airplane book or like waiting in line book or, um, you know, palate cleanser in between heavier things. Like that is exactly what that is. Do not put any more pressure on it to be anything else. Cause it's not going to be, um, she also is the writer of the X hex, which I believe she writes under the name of Aaron Sterling. Um, do not enjoy those books at all. <laughs> so there we go. Somebody said that they reminded the, I reminded them of the main character in the X X. And I was like, I am going to take that as a compliment, even though I cannot stand those books. Magnolia Palace was perfectly fine. Love and Other Disasters was my top from there. So uh, I'm going to pick the top of all the months and then pick my favorites of those 12, basically. I think that'll that'll be how we do this. Um, okay, this was a fun month. Uh, first of all, Don't Cry For Me was incredible. It was a five-star book for me. Uh, really devastating and difficult read. Uh, 
I, what I love is the author's note really just sets everything up perfectly for how he kind of puts you into a seat where you're like, wow, I cannot even imagine. Um, the author is gay and his father had a disease, uh, Alzheimer's and died of Alzheimer's and he wound up having to care for his father and they had a very contentious relationship. And he talks about that f- the kind of an inspiration to write this book came from, uh, giving care to somebody that didn't love him the way that he wanted to be loved essentially. And sort of what that must've felt like. And so the book is actually written from the perspective of a father with a gay son and who's tr- kind of trying to apologize or at least tell his own story. And, um, oh man, it was just, it's very short, but it's super, it has it packs of real punch. Um, I think it's really well written and I loved the end of it. Uh, A River Enchanted uh, was a little bit slower than I thought it was going to be. I kind of got lost a little bit in the narrative. uh, So don't super quote, like ask me lots of questions and details about uh, what happened in the book. uh, Because by the end, I don't really know. Uh, All I know is that, I mean, I know what happened. Like I understand. I I don't want to say it because it like spoils it, but essentially this guy goes back to the place where he was raised and there's sort of magic happening and there's these girls that keep disappearing and then he gets involved in the search for them and there is a leader in the community that is female that he knows that he's like kind of friendly sort of not really friendly with sort of friendly they have a history basically complicated history and it kind of shifts over to her narrative more and it also goes to the narrative of some of the other people in the area which I thought was fine but I don't know. I just found parts of it to be a little confusing for some reason. Um, and we didn't, uh, it was fine. I'm going to read the sequel. I kind of feel like I need to reread it because I think it might be better on a reread. Um, but it's slow and it's atmospheric. So if that's not your thing, don't go there. Um, and you find out what happens with these girls and it's like, okay. Uh, the golden couple. So I was I was bummed that this got picked because... I'm not a fan. Um, I'm not a fan of these writers. I've read one of their other books and I really didn't care for it. I thought it was really boring and kind of silly, but I loved this one. And I think I loved it more than I would have because it surprised me so much. So go figure. Uh, it's about a couple that is in divorce, uh, th- like therapy, they're in couples therapy. And, uh, just some things happen that I was like, Oh, and there's a, um, yeah, the ther- it's also like from the therapist POV as well, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it just went places and the ending was really fun. Again, I don't think it's like any thing that you need to put too much hype on. Like it's uh, just a fun, quick, cool thriller that actually wound up surprising me again because I was so disappointed with previous stuff. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Vladimir also wild. What a wild read. I still think about that book sometimes. Uh, I think it is an excellent satire. And I think I love a book that kind of takes a character that, uh, it, I think normally we sort of put on a pedestal or say we kind of write them off as kind of one dimensional human being. And Vladimir gives this person many, many dimensions, and some of them are terrifying. <laughs> it just does really uh, wild stuff with it. Um, the main character is extremely unlikable. She's supposed to be unlikable. Um, and sometimes that is un- not enjoyable to read. But I think that Julia May Jonas did a fantastic job making it something I didn't want to put down. I could not stop reading this book. Um, I think I wound up finishing it at the gym on audio because I was like, I cannot put this book down and it went places I didn't expect it to. Uh, and that's all I will say about it. That doesn't really give you much about the book, but, um, I don't, I I honestly think if you can handle the things that I've mentioned, uh, the extreme satire, the kind of smashing of putting certain types of people on pedestals, like, I think you'd be fine with it. And like, it's literary fiction, but it's not like, um, I don't find the writing particularly challenging, which I think is cool. Uh, okay, so we have Peach Blossom Spring, which uh, starts in mainland China and uh, goes all the way over to the United States and is three different generations, which love, 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 love. I, I, I don't know. I just found the whole discovery of identity and who we are and how the history impacts us to be really uh, beautiful. And it's just well written. Um, I would read more from Melissa Fu. But yeah, this was a debut. Um I don't know. I learned things. I felt things. 
it was great. So of these, I would say, damn, this is a tough month. The best, I don't even know. Gosh, this is actually really hard. Um, wow. I mean, it's kind of a four-way tie. <laughs> it's a four-way tie, but you can't do that. Uh, they're all really great for different reasons. So I guess for this one, I'll do the historical fiction because uh, I don't think that I have much historical fiction on my list in general. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say the historical fiction there, the Peach Blossom Spring. Uh, just really moving, beautiful. Oh, I can't talk about some of the plot points that I loved the most because they kind of spoil the book. But um, if you love any sort of like mother son story um, or family secret or immigration story, uh, any of those things, I think you'll like Peach Blossom Spring. Um, all right. So we have the Book of Cold Cases, uh, which I technically finished, but oh God, barely. Oof, I cannot stand those books. Uh, the Cartographers, The Verifiers, The Unsinkable Greta James, and Dating Dr. Dill. Uh, okay. So uh, let's just get on with the bad first. The Unsinkable Greta James is freaking boring and super predictable and basically an episode of Parenthood that I've already seen like seven times. So I could not stand the fact that this woman who's supposed to be this like indie music person, uh, is going through it and, um, not talking to anybody that like basically not calling her agent back, not calling her manager back, not calling these people back that she's supposed to be calling and just kind of, there's just no consequences or stakes. It's like, well, you really need to get in touch with this. You really need to be doing this thing. And she's like, no, I'm going to stay in Alaska. And there was just no sense of urgency, but they kept reminding you that she needed to call these people. And I'm just like, so what's the point? Like there are no stakes here, like at all. It's like, um, that sounds so mean. I don't, <laughs> I'm really not trying to be like to crap on the writing here. Cause it's not bad writing at all. Like it's just, um, I didn't feel a sense of like, again, urgency. I was like, okay. So, and even the grief, I was like, uh, okay, like I get that it's here. It just, I don't know. It just didn't work for me the way that other thing, it didn't pack the punch, I guess that I was hoping for. Uh, but if you're looking for a book that has a nice tight narrative that has some, um, kind of wanderlust in it, I think that's, this is really good for that. Um, the whole cruise atmosphere was kind of fun. Um, yeah. So th those are good things to say about it. I really don't want to be a jerk. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, okay. Lucy Foley, the Paris apartment. No, thank you. Um, I just couldn't get into this one. I get that people love her. I liked her other two fine. Um, I don't know. This just didn't work for me and some things just don't do that. Uh, I am a fan of mysteries. I don't even mind a locked room one. I just couldn't connect with it. I did finish it. I wish I had not. Um, thank you, Scribd, for having that <laughs> on your platform. Tell Me Everything uh, was really intense. It's a nonfiction, uh, true crime novel about uh, essentially, it's essentially about sexual assault. Um, I have to be careful about how I talk about those things on YouTube. Um, and... It, the woman who is writing this book was an investigator and kind of new to investigating things. I think this is one of her first uh, times doing this and, and kind of going and collecting. She essentially worked for an attorney uh, that was going to do some sort of class action lawsuit, I believe, something along those lines. You can tell it's been a while since I've read it. The things that that kind of stayed with me is it's autobiographical as well. She talks about her complicated relationship with her mother, um, and sort of her own journey, uh, as a human being dealing with some of the things that are brought up that she's now investigating and kind of how that impacted her. Um, and it is not a, uh, clean, you know, the story is over, you know, as I don't think any of these things are or should be, um, it was tough to read. It was, uh, painful and, um, uh, I'm, I'm not like sad. I read it. I'm happy. I read it. I guess I, I'm satisfied that I read it. I don't really know the words to describe it. Um, but there were th decisions that the author made that I think 
she doesn't necessarily say she regrets. They were very difficult choices that I was like, I don't know what I would do in that situation. I don't know if it's that or not, but wow, you know. Uh, so it's a walk in somebody's shoes that are, it's a very complicated walk. That's what I'll say. And, um, it's really powerful. Dating Dr. Dill was really cute. Uh, I did enjoy it. I will say that there are some things in it, and this is just romance in general. Like romance is one of the most finicky, uh, genres I think out there, because if there's a particular trope or a particular aspect of the romance that just for whatever reason doesn't really vibe with you, it can kind of throw things out of whack. The doctor in this book, uh, he names his penis. And at first I thought it was like just this funny thing, like, you know, like a throwaway joke thing. And I was like, Oh no, like he really did name it though. Like, and it has a name and he refers to like it, it has his own personality. And I was like, Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know about that. That was a little weird to me, uh, but also funny. You know, um, I love a romance that features really fun side characters, and this had a lot of cool side characters. So yeah, it works. Okay, I think that the best two here are the cartographers and the verifiers. Um, I really hope that the verifiers is a series. I thought that Jane Peck did a really great job of bringing New York to life, bringing this main character to life. She is an investigator for a company that she's not supposed to do anything. She's essentially supposed to report back, but she is heavily inspired by, uh, this series of crime novels. And she kind of gets into the crime aspect of it all. Uh, but she works for a company that essentially is hired to kind of spy on people and sort of report back to the folks that hire them. And she kind of takes a little too far and I loved it. I just thought it was, it had capery moments. It had uh, fast paced, cool actiony moments. It just, it was like, she really understands the genre that she's trying to reference, but also create her own thing. And she, did, I thought she did an excellent job with that. And I think that the main character in this book was awesome and interesting and fascinating. And I just loved it. Um, really great side characters as well. So really fun, cool read. Uh, the Cart the cartographers was another book I enjoyed. Um, I will say over time, I kind of feel a little less like, um, glowy about it. it it's, mm, I would say when I read it, I was on vacation and I was packing and I turned it on thinking maybe if I don't like it, I'll just listen to something else. And I never turned it off. That's the cartographers. I was like, this is such a strange book. Um, there are magical elements in it, but I would not call it fantasy. I think that book of the month calls it fantasy. It's not really fantasy fantasy. I mean, fantastical things happen, but it's not, uh, I would say it's more like, um, I would say it's contemporary fiction with a very basic mystery, uh, that needs fantasy to pull off how it works. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but it's kind of cool, interesting fantasy, uh, and it involves maps and, uh, the New York public library and, uh, a group of friends who discover something that they don't even understand, um, what, the power of it is truly capable of and they misjudge that and that's sort of the basis of the mystery and the daughter of one of these people the friend group is sort of at the center of all of this and so that was all really cool I just think that uh Hank Shepard did a great job making me really care and be invested in the main character and I wanted to see like where the journey was going to take her and you know I guessed who the baddie was before they told me and, and I don't care. It was fine. It was fun. So I would say the best of all of these is definitely the verifiers. Uh, okay. Now we're going to get into interesting territory. I DNF'd the good left undone. Um, I started it and I wasn't even like totally, it wasn't like I was like, Oh, I can't stand this. I was just like, I'm not vibing with it. Like it, uh, it was about a woman in Italy and her dog granddaughter. She's talking to her and she's like trying to tell her a story about the past and something to do with world war II. And I was like, I'm going to slowly exit. <laughs> so, uh, that's all I remember there. I remember there was like a watch, um, I think that if I was in a different mood, I would have been more, uh, I would have sunk into this a little bit more, but I just wasn't. And, um, I've heard good things I've heard some people like it. I have heard too many people talk too much about it though. Not to say that that isn't a good book. Um, then we have Kaikei, uh, which I know I'm saying wrong and I, oh, I'm so annoyed with myself. I didn't look this up beforehand. Um, 
really interesting book. Definitely, again, a fantasy, yes, but not hardcore fantasy. So if you're, if again, if you're somebody who struggles with that, I know a lot of people, they talk about, oh, you know, uh, I'm not like a big fantasy person. Uh, I can't handle X, Y, Z things. Um, I think this is great because it, like there's fantasy elements to it, but it's not, it's really a book about relationships, about a mother and a son uh, who she wants certain things for and doesn't necessarily go the way she wants. Uh, there's a lot of family drama in it, um, and a lot of history. So this is a retelling of the Ramayana, which I do not know shit about, and I'm not going to pretend I do. Uh, so I can only speak to the book that I read and not to the material that it is based on. And I understand that there is a lot of controversy around that. And I've read a lot of different reviews on it. And, um, I think that if that's something you want to read more about, I encourage you to go find those. I'll try to put some of the ones that I read in the comments. Um, but I think the author was really clear in the note at the end, um, kind of where she was coming at when she was writing this. And, you know, I thought that was interesting. So, uh, and I enjoyed reading Kaiki. It's, it's long. It's pretty long. It's like, uh, like 500 ish pages. Uh, but I think it earns its length and, um, it's really the story of this woman, uh, understanding herself, understanding her power. Her ability is one where she can kind of visualize the bonds that she has with someone and can kind of almost like manipulate them. And I thought that was really cool the way that it worked. And, uh, yeah, so I would say if you're somebody who, again, is like newer to fantasy and wants like an, a nice little on ramp, I think this might be a good one. Um, I also have discovered that I just love reading books by Indian authors about really anything in India, like at any time period, uh, any sort of anything about India I like to read about. Uh, so uh, I actually have two coming from Book of the Month this month, and I'm very excited about that. So, yeah, who knew? Um, I just want to read more about India and Indian culture. Um, a book I read around the same time is called Honor. That was fascinating. Um, yeah, lots of different books. Uh, so the next one, Bittersweet, DNF'd. <laughs> so I just, uh, so this is a book, uh, this is a nonfiction book about uh, that feeling of ennui, essentially. And I was like, I'm an artist. I, I get this. I don't, I don't want to read a book on this, basically. Uh, again, I think other people loved it. She wrote a book about, I want to say like sight or something um, that sounded cool. I think that if you liked it, I'm really happy that you enjoyed it. I, it just wasn't really for me. Uh, like a sister really enjoyed, really liked like a sister, really cool mystery. Um, I would honestly read it again too. I just, and the main character, I love a main character that is a non, what's the word? Like a non law enforcement detective, like a non-professional detective. I love that. That is like one of my favorites. I don't know why. I think probably, and I've spoken about this before. I love it when somebody who feels like the justice system is not going to, um, uphold justice in this case. And they kind of have to prove that the thing that they're, that has happened to them or has happened to their loved one is worthy of attention. And so they kind of take it into their, that was like the vibe I got from this. Um, the main character's father is a famous uh, musician in like the music industry. And it was kind of cool to see their dynamic and how she kind of lived outside of that sphere as well. And um, her sister has passed and it's, she's trying to discover who murdered her. And I just, I don't know. It was, it was really great. And the end was capery, uh, and cool. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I would totally read it again. I don't love the cover for it. I just, I don't know why. I just think the cover really let it down. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's whatever. Sorry to the person who designed the cover. I'm just not crazy about it. Um, true biz, absolutely gorgeous. I cried at the end of this book. Um, I have spent a couple years learning American sign language and learning more about deaf culture and am not an expert on it remotely period whatsoever. So way better resources out there than little old me. Uh, but this touched on so many things that I had, uh, learned from deaf people in the deaf world. And, um, Oh man, the end of it, I was just in tears. I was in absolute tears. Uh, she writes down every name. This is like after the story. This has nothing to do with the story. She writes down the name of every uh, school for the deaf that has closed. 
Um, and, uh, it was just heartbreaking. Um, yeah, I live in a city that has a school for the deaf. Um, and you know, it's truly something that many people don't understand the importance of and the importance of kind of protecting the deaf community and, um, I don't know, and promoting the deaf community. And I just, yeah, really, really enjoyed this book. Um, so I'm going to have to say that was my best of the month. Honestly, it's a real tight race between that and like a sister, honestly, like it really could be either like a sister or true biz, but true biz is just so beautiful and so well done. Um, so I'm going to say that one. All right. Here's another good month. It's a great month. Okay. So breathless, yerba buena, um, the hacienda, take my hand and part of your world and darling girl. Uh, again, I think darling girl and these like fantasy sort of like fairy tale retellings are really great onboardings for fantasy people. If like you're somebody again, who's like, mm, like you're not ready to dive into a luma crate or fairy loot, um, get a fantasy from book of the month. Like because they are never that hardcore. <laughs> uh, Darling Girl is a retelling of Peter Pan. It's not really a retelling. It's within the universe of Peter Pan. Um, the granddaughter of Wendy is the main character. Uh, and there's some wild science in it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was good. I liked it. Um, it was not the best thing I read that month, but I liked it. Part of your world surprised me. I, again, when I'm ready to really dislike a book and then it just becomes really entertaining, that is the best feeling ever and totally why I try to read all the books. Of the like that, that's the, that is the vibe that I'm trying to chase. And part of your world did that. Just the kookiest, cutest characters. Um, the romance was totally fine. It could have been hotter for sure. Um, I don't think Book of the Month ever goes hardcore sl smut anyway, but th 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 um, this is the beginning of a series. I'm excited about that. It's essentially about a woman from the city and a guy from the country, but each of those characters were three dimensional. That is my thing with romance. Like, don't give me these twee, two dimensional, like, ugh, no, or one dimensional, flat ass characters. I need full rounded people. And the main character, um, the woman uh, that the story is mostly from her POV. She's a doctor and she has a very complicated life. And this guy kind of gives her an outlet, but you know, they have issues. And of course, little goat, oh my gosh, oh, I really, and so this is actually part of a series. The next one's coming out, I think like this month or next month. And I am a thousand percent reading it. So I think I've already pre-ordered it. I take my hand, gorgeous book. Uh, Dylan Perkins Valdez did the thing that I love, which is she explores the idea of what it means to help. What does it actually mean to help? And what is helpful uh, to people that are living something, an experience that you don't necessarily understand? The nurse uh, that's at the center of this book um, is from an upper class family. And she goes in to help these two younger girls and is just kind of following orders and does something that um, she feels she should not have done. And it bounces in between that time period and it goes into the forced sterilization of black women in the South that took and other parts of the country do for far too long. Um, and it wasn't just black women, but this is specifically about the black women. That's what the story is about. Um, it is, uh, like a must read. I honestly think I feel like regardless of, if you're a big fan of historical fiction, I just think this reads, just like a really engaging story. And, uh, it goes in between when she was a young nurse to present day. And yeah, I just thought she did a great job. This is like one of those books that, um, when I talk to readers, they'll be like, yeah, I've read this book. I really like it, but I don't see a lot about it. And I feel like I should see more about it. Um, and I also heard an interview with Sarah's bookshelves live with Dolan Perkin Valdez. And I thought she was so interesting and just a great interview. And I also just enjoyed learning more about her writing process. So really great. Hacienda DNF didn't like it. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Gothic horror. And like, no, I just discovered 2022 is not the year of Gothic fiction for Genevieve. You couldn't do it. Um, I own it. It's on my Kindle. So maybe I'll go back to it one day, but not today. Yerba Buena. Amazing, gorgeous, beautiful, um, quiet literary book 
uh, about two women and their relationship. Uh, but there were moments that were, oh, she really built some tension in this book that blew me away. It's character study. It's really into that. So like, if you're not, if that's not your thing, then move on. But I, this book painted pictures in my head that I, I want to keep looking at. That's how I describe this. Just oof, love this. I would, I actually do plan on rereading this. Pretty sure I have it on my shelf. Um, Breathless, another book I would reread. Um, a really, f like, I shouldn't say fun mystery because it's like kind of harrowing actually. <laughs> but it's about climbing and it's like adventure -y, and I love that. So I was really into that. Uh, there isn't too much to say about it other than it's about a journalist who is going to go climb with this guy and there's a lot of barriers to that that she has to get through. And uh, and a, then a, a mystery ensues. But what is it? The, the game is afoot. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the hand signal is for that, but yeah. Uh, okay. Best of the month. Dang. Ooh, this is tough. Ooh, I really want to say you're from I want to say you're from I'm going to say you're from <laughs> Uh, it, it's really a tie between you're from take my hand and part of your world, but I'm going to have to go with you're from That one has stuck around the most in my head visually in my brain. Like I can see like sunlight and, um, just the way these women think in this book. I don't know. I just really loved it. Um, just really strong writing. Okay. Next. The Stardust Thief, Things We Do in the Dark, The Lifestyle, Woman of Light, The Lies I Tell, The Wedding Dress, Sewing Circle. Interesting month. Um, I want you to place bets on what I didn't like. <laughs> Put in the comments the, what you think I didn't like from June 2022. We're about halfway there. Um, I just don't even remember The Stardust Thief. Um, I read it really quickly, and um, it just didn't stick with me. And I, I own it, so I can go back to it, which I'm happy about. And I think I'm going to do that because this, I believe, is a series. So I think that what, what can happen is like when the second one comes out, I'll just go and read the first one again. So unfortunately, I can't really give that one the fairest uh, shake in this race. Um, Things We Do in the Dark really liked it. Uh, it was kind of intense for a lot of people. I don't know. I just got sucked into it. I really liked Jennifer Hillier's writing. I just, yeah. And I really appreciate Tina from Book Talk, etc. Uh, hooking me up with a um, audiobook, the free audiobook for this. She got like a little code or whatever for Google Play. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. It really helped me out. Um, the lifestyle DNF'd. Oof, no, I, I skipped to the end to be like, how's this going to go? And then I was like, no, I just, no. Again, um, I think that it, this is listed as contemporary fiction. It's, it's a romance. Um, maybe it's, con maybe they don't consider it a romance because of what happens or who the person ends up with. Because usually in a romance, it's like happily ever after. But this was a happily ever after. Spoiler alert. Um, I just, uh, so the lifestyle talks about swinging, um, and a woman is in a relationship with a guy who she catches cheating on her. And then he basically is just like, well, let's be poly. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I just don't care for that. It's just, no. Uh, so then I skipped to the end and was like, oh, okay, this is how it ends moving on. Like it does. People said that they didn't think it was offensive to poly relationships and maybe it's not. Cause again, I didn't read all of it, but, uh, there is one character that kind of represents Polly in a positive way, but, um, you know, as someone who just does not believe that every human being can be monogamous for their entire lives, um, this felt really unrealistic and weird and I, and really just upholding the kind of agenda of like, no, we wind up with one person and that's our soulmate. And I was just like, get, oh, get out of here. Um, the woman of light this book is written in a way that is occasionally hard to follow. It is beautiful. Uh, very, very, very beautiful writing. Story-wise, I did struggle, and I feel bad saying that. I feel stupid saying that, to be honest. Um, it is just the truth. I read all of it. I really don't remember much of it, to be totally honest. I, I, like, little bits and pieces from it. That's about it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I own it. I can always go back to it. Um, the wedding dress sewing circle. I actually liked, 
<laughs> I didn't think I would like it because it's very saccharine. If you want a saccharine little historical fiction about like, you know, these British ladies making sewing or making wedding dresses during the second world war. And it's all like stiff upper lip kind of, um, keep calm, carry on kind of stuff. Then you'll like this. Um, I was surprised that I liked it as much as I did. Maybe it's just when I read it, it was like in between heavier things. Um, great palette cleanser. The characters were really sweet. That's about it there. Um, and then the lies I tell again, didn't expect to like it. The lies I tell, the title even, I was like, I can't remember this title. I can't remember this cover. Like, and actually there's another book that I'm going to talk about that comes out the next month that the covers look so similar and I kept confusing them. Um, but this is the better one. <laughs> so, uh, it surprised me. It really surprised me. It's very psychological, uh, which I enjoyed and I would actually read more from this author. Um, it's essentially about, it's like a cat and mouse thing. Um, the, which was really fun. I don't want to say too much about it. I feel like you should just go into it like kind of blind, but, um, yeah, there's lies and they're being told and, uh, there's people chasing after other people and it's wild. And I stayed up till two o'clock in the morning reading it. And it's one of those where it's like, I need to know how this ends. Like I have to know what is going to happen next. So it is a tie between things we do in the dark and the lies I tell. I'm going to go with the lies I tell. I'm going to do that. That's the, that's the one that sticks with me str most strongly for the longest, which I think that's why I like kind of not revisiting these before I go back. Cause I like to go off my first impression, the experience that I had reading it. And, um, it's very close between things we do in the dark and lies. I tell lies. I tell definitely one. All right. Here's another great month. Oh my gosh. This is a really good month. Uh, first born was not my thing. First born was bad in my opinion. <laughs> uh, first born, the reason I did not like it is because it, uh, need, well, I, I don't want to spoil this because I feel like if you like books that are hyper plotty, like if you like a book that has like a wild little twist, read this book, you'll like it. Like I, for real, like this will be your thing. I don't like that. Like, I don't like what I feel to be gimmicky books. And this felt very gimmicky to me. And I did not care for that. Uh, so no upgrade perfectly fine. It was not my favorite, uh, sci-fi book I've read. It's not my favorite adventure book I've read, but I do like sci-fi adventure and this fit the bill perfectly fine. Super fast book, read it in a day. Um, it kind of does this thing where it's like, makes you think, doesn't it? And you're like, I guess it's like kind of, it's not very deep, but it, it kind of wants to be deep and it's, and it's not, it doesn't I, like, I didn't need it to be. So, um, the fast pace of it was really fun. Um, I think it's smart that these books are clearly coming out at a time when people are going to be on beaches and, uh, you know, on planes. And I think those are great books for that, like upgrade and firstborn fantastic for that. Like take that to the beach. The Bodyguard, fantastic. That was my first Catherine Center, and I really want to read more of her. Oh, my gosh. That book was really funny. Like, I would reread it, even though I know what happens. Um, it's about a woman who's a bodyguard, and she is uh, the bodyguard for a famous male actor, and uh, hilarity ensues, basically. Uh, I just, the characters, again, very three-dimensional, uh, funny, interesting, quirky, but not quirky where you're just, like, rolling your eyes out of the back of your head. Um, yeah, just fun and funny and sexy and great. Oh, that book was so good. I, I would like to reread it. Honestly, uh, you're invited. I liked this more than I think most people did. Um, I think most people wanted it to be, um, either twistier or more intense. I think that this has one of the, my favorite opening lines, in a book that I read in 2022. I just, the first part of it, I was like, holy shit, this is a great way to start a book. It really just jumps you right in. The main character is super neurotic. So if you don't care for that, then, um, but it follows her, uh, going to the wedding of somebody that she had a terrible falling out with and kind of goes from there. So it takes place in Sri Lanka, uh, which like, I love going to places I've never been before in a book, you know? So I thought that was cool. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I thought it just did a really good job. Um, if you liked the Lucy Foley wedding book, you might like this, honestly. Um, I, to me, it has kind of similar vibes, like definitely a few characters in there that are just like, yikes, these people, like they're so annoying. 
in a way where you're like, oh, and they're doing bad stuff. Like, I want to know more about that, you know? Uh, and then tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I voted for this for book of the year. So obviously I really liked it. Um, just here's the thing. I completely understand why people weren't all nuts about this. I, so I went to Carnegie Mellon and the way that the female character talks about being in computer science at a major university that's kind of like known for that. I'm not saying it's like MIT because I didn't go to MIT, but I don't know. The way she talked about being uh, one of the few female uh, computer science uh, folks in her class. I studied art. There were enough women in my department. Uh, I knew and hung out with a lot of the CS kids. And I don't know, like it just reminded me a lot of hanging out with some of those people and some of the things that they said and some of the things I've heard from women in tech. Um, and the relationship dynamics in the book, I also really uh, felt very familiar to me and how destructive it was and complicated. I don't know. I thought it was really beautiful. And the one chapter that everybody has a problem with, I loved. So <laughs> the one chapter that really turns people off, I absolutely adored. I thought it was beautiful. And I think that uh, Gabrielle Zevin is a gorgeous writer and I just loved it. So I hate to say it because like, I really feel like it's, it's so hard when you have a book like Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow up against a book like The Bodyguard, both are equally incredible. It sucks to me that like to say Tomorrow, Tomorrow is the better book. It's not better because it was like written better than a romance. Like I think the reason I like it more is because it has like a lasting impact, but a book like The Bodyguard is like an equal five stars to me. You know, I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but that's just how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is my top. So we have the Karen Slaughter, which is the second in a series. I did not read the first one. I only read this one um, because that was the one that was here. And I've never read a Karen Slaughter before. Uh, Small Angels, Bronze Drum, Daisy Darker, When We Were Bright and Beautiful, The Many Daughters of uh, A Fong Moy, um, or A Fong Moy, I believe. Also, my dog is playing with a treat puzzle right now. So... I don't know if you can hear that or not, <laughs> but we're going to turn the mic down a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, Devil Takes You Home. So, oh man, this is a weird month. All right. So of these, I just have to talk about the ones I DNF'd. I DNF'd Bronze Drum and not because it wasn't good. I just, I couldn't get into it. And I really think it's one I just need to go back to. That's definitely just a not right now book. Um, I DNF'd when we were bright and beautiful. I could not hang with this. I get that it's like, you know, rich people behaving badly. And, um, I don't know. I just, I really didn't like, I just didn't want to deal with these people. I didn't want to feel remotely sympathetic for any of them. Not even saying that that's what the book was asking me to do. I just was really not in the mood for this. Um, it's essentially from the perspective of a woman whose brother is accused of rape and, um, they're extremely wealthy and it's all about kind of like protecting the family name. And, uh, I just really didn't want to deal with it. I just really didn't want to deal with these people. Um, I think also I'm just like exhausted of like rich people getting away with stuff right now. <laughs> just not in the mood for it. Um, and I'm not saying that that to spoil the book cause I didn't finish it. So I don't actually know what happens, but, um, more just, I don't know. Um, I really wanted to like, uh, many daughters more and I didn't dislike it. Um, it just, it didn't hang together the way I wanted it to. Like it, I, it does the many generational thing, which I love. Um, it does a cool kind of swinging through time, which I think was really cool and interesting. Uh, I, I don't know. It just, it just didn't speak to me the way that other multi-generational books do. And there was an element in the end of it that I didn't really understand what was going on. It was sort of like an echoey sort of thing. Uh, this book is about le uh, the legacy of trauma and how that can kind of affect people further down the line, which I thought was fit. Like, I love books about that. Like I love exploring that idea. I think we should talk about it even more. Um, it just didn't a hundred percent work for me, but it wasn't bad. Um, the devil takes you home was a wild ride. All right. Uh, <laughs> small angels. I really did not, care for that book Daisy Darker I also uh it's like whatever 
I was like, whatever. I think this is one of the better Alice Feenies, actually, for me. Uh, but I still wasn't nuts about it. I might have DNF'd it. The reason I can't remember is because I know I looked at the end and was like, no, nah, I'm cool. I know what happened. I know the twist. So I don't remember if I read the twist or if I just looked it up. Whatever. Um, so that's, you know, that small angels. I don't, I kind of got, I get lost in Gothic fiction. It's like people talking about stuff and I'm just not really understanding what's going on. <laughs> so that's why I struggled. Uh, I'm like, what? Okay. Um, and then the Karen Slaughter I actually enjoyed. Uh, I do think you should read the other one <laughs> before you read this one. Um, and I think she's a really strong writer. Uh, I really kind of got deep into the story pretty quickly. Um, it wasn't my favorite though of the month for sure. Uh, but it's essentially about a woman who works for the FBI in, I guess in the previous book, she was not working for the FBI and now she is. And, uh, she has an interesting dynamic with one of her people who I'm assuming is from the first book. You can see like why you should probably read the first one first and I didn't. Whatever. Again, I am chaos. I don't, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it doesn't keep me up at night that I didn't read the first one. Uh, maybe I'll go back and read it. So it's about the disappearance of a woman from long ago that has somehow linked to the dis uh, disappearance of somebody that this woman knows. And, you know, it kind of has like a little bit of a silence of the lambs feel without the grittiness, a little gritty, not super gritty though. I don't know why I feel like it has a silence of the lambs. Feel. Somebody's going to write in the comments that I'm full of shit and that's fine. But that's how I felt about it. So it was cool. The best of this month for me was definitely The Devil Takes You Home. This book is gritty. I was actually kind of surprised the book of the month picked this. This is the first book of the month book that is listed as horror that I think actually is horror. Um, it's It has a lot of violence in it um, and is very much about, uh, let's see, fear and pain and... Um, kind of going to any lengths and the cost of that. Um, yeah, it's dark. It's a dark book. Uh, it starts off with a character that basically has no other recourse other than to take a job that's pretty dangerous and kind of goes from there. And you see some stuff like there's, it's kind of grisly. Um, you just see a lot of really disturbing stuff. Um, if you are sensitive about uh, harming a child, any sort of harm happening to a child, do not read this book because I, I am not super sensitive to that. And I actually had a moment where I was like, damn, oof. Um, it surprised me. It really shocked me. So that's definitely the best of that. Now we're, oof, now we're getting into really tough territory. Love on the brain. Eh. I liked it more than I thought I was going to. That's a good thing. The Attic Child Gorgeous loved this book, cried 7 million times. I uh, think this writer is fantastic. Need to read more of her books. Other Birds, perfectly fine. Um, again, if you're not somebody who's super into fantasy, read this book uh, as like a minor little gateway into fantasy. It has like magical realism. Here's the thing that really fucks me up about Other Birds. For like 98% of the book, I was like, this is fine. The last 2%, I was like, damn, that was good. <laughs> Which I don't think is fair. I, I mean, yes, the ending can really save a book. The ending of this was so cool and I really liked it. It was really beautiful, but like it didn't save the whole rest of it for me. I don't know. It's about sort of these, it's about two different women. One is younger, one is older. Um, and they're living on this island and they're kind of both going through different things. And uh, the one girl, she is a girl, she's like 17, 18. She, uh, her mother died when she was really young. Her father raised her, wasn't really crazy about her. Her father's family wasn't really crazy about her. She's excited to go and go off to college. And so she's living in this apartment that her mother lived on uh, before she died. And uh, it's like a house in this sort of little community. And there's a woman who does henna tattoos that's across the way. She's like 26. And she kind of takes this younger girl under her wing a little bit. Um, and she has kind of stuff going on. And so you learn more about her. And then there's a guy who's a chef and then he's sort of, you know, so it's all these like interesting little characters and their stories, um, and how they kind of all come together and kind of become their own little family. And there's some other stuff going on there too. Um, and I, so I did like it. I did like it, but it wasn't like there were times I just didn't always want to pick it up. If that makes sense. I wasn't like clamoring to finish it. 
And then when I did, I was like, man, I'm really glad I read that. Like the ending was really beautiful. Uh, the last chapter I just loved. Um, but that doesn't make it my favorite book. Um, the Attic Child takes place from two different perspectives, two different times in the same place. One from the perspective of a woman who was uh, abused by uh, a foster, the girlfriend of her father after her father passes, who's horrible. Um, and then the a young boy who was brought from uh, what we think is the Congo. It's like not hyper specific and there's a reason why it's not. Um, and he's brought there under the generosity of this, uh, white guy who's going to like civilize him. And he's, he lives in the attic and oof, this book, I cannot wait to reread this book. Um, I just think that the author did a really great job of balancing these two very different, but also similar narratives. Sometimes with books like that, there's like one that people prefer over the other. I think they were very well balanced. Um, just really gorgeous writing. And the ending was really beautiful. Um, and there's some twists in the end that were really cool. Um, yeah, I just definitely about, uh, the legacy of trauma and racism in England and just, just and colonialism and sort of the long standing impact of that. And the author wrote it based on seeing a photograph of a boy who was brought to England. Uh, like she saw a picture of him and was just like, Oh, I want to know, basically wanted to write a story inspired by him. So man, Ooh, book gives me chills. Killers of a certain age loved this book total thrill ride t from toe to tip. Loved it. It's about these women who were spies in the 60s, 70s, and they were badasses. And then they are retiring and then something goes wild and wildness happens. And I loved every second of it. It was fantastic. I loved it. I love badass 60 and 70 year olds. Um, I don't want to say anything more about it. Just if you like adventure books, it's great. Uh, the Fortunes of Jaded Women. Oh, okay. I want Killers of a Certain Age to be a movie. Enough said. Uh, the Fortunes of Jaded Women. I loved this book. People, like, found, I guess, the characters to be annoying or something. I was obsessed with them. <laughs> I love how uh, loud everybody is in this book, how everybody's kind of talking over everybody and arguing and having all these issues with each other. With each other. And um, I just loved it. And it, it was, it was really... Um, I would read this again. There's a few of these that I would read again. Um, and this one in particular, it was just really, it was heartwarming, but it wasn't heartwarming in the sense that it was like everybody was perfect and everything was sweet and lovely. If that makes sense. It was just, I don't know. I really enjoyed this one a lot. Um, and the end was really cool and kind of ended on this like, uh, emotional family moment kind of thing. It's, it's about a complicated family and a curse. If you liked practical magic, um, there's a little bit of those vibes in this. Uh, if well, I'm trying to think of another book that it's reminding me of and I can't, but I, I don't know. I just, I found it really heartwarming and awesome and, uh, yeah, would read again. Uh, and then we are on to October, almost done. Sign here, Thistlefoot, uh, the family game, foul lady of fortune, Hester, Jacqueline in Paris, and long as the lemon tree grows. Whew, banger of a month. Let me tell you sign here. Freaking fantastic. It's about a guy, uh, who is in hell and hell, the way hell is described is awesome. We could have been there longer and he's trying to get contracts from people in this particular family line. If he essentially gets like a hat trick of contracts signed, then he, um, gets a second shot at life, but other things happen. And that's all I will say about it. It's violent but it's not, I didn't think it was gory, but you know, uh, there's content warning for suicide in this, but it talks a lot about death and hell. So <laughs> if those are a problem for you, it might bother you. Uh, this little foot I really wanted to like more than I liked it. I need to go back and try it again. I, I finished it and, uh, I just, there's a lot going on in it. There's a lot happening in it. And that's the problem is that if it was just one thing that was happening, but then there's like this other, I was like, I couldn't keep track of what the fuck was going on in that book. Um, and so I was like, I, this is too much. Um, the family game reminds me a lot of this horror movie that I saw about it's called ready or not, where this woman, uh, on her wedding day has to like, or 
yeah, after she's married, like she has to, she's living with this family, like the, in this big fancy mansion and they have to play a game after the wedding. And, uh, the same kind of thing happens in this. Um, except I think they're like already married or something. She, yeah. Sorry. I'm really confusing the movie with the book cause they're so similar. <laughs> so if you liked that, uh, you know, what do you call it? If you liked that, uh, book or movie, then you'll like this book. It was fine. Um, I enjoyed it. I actually had a good time with it, but it was not my favorite book of the month. Foul Lady of Fortune. I actually liked better than the second book in the, our violent delights book. Uh, so I liked it better than our violent ends. I think, yeah, this was kind of cool. It's like spy. -y. It takes place within the same universe. I would say it was a little too long, but basically the premise is that this character has the ability to not be killed and, or at least it's very difficult to kill her. She can regenerate and stuff like that. And then she and this dude are sent in as spies for a thing. There's like a lot of politics in it that I've found a little difficult to follow at times, but, and they're essentially teen spies, which is great. And, uh, there's action and that's really fun. And of course there's always romance and yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed it. And it's within that sort of universe that the Chloe Gong has created. But yeah, I didn't think I was going to like it. And then I started kind of liking it. And then towards the end, I was like, okay, can we finish this book, please? <laughs> but overall it was good. Hester DNF'd. I just... I couldn't do it. And I think I need to go back to this one too. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. I think that for this one, you know, it, it should be my thing. And I, it was just wrong place, wrong time, honestly, because we're getting towards the end of the year. And I like, that's when my reading kind of plummeted because I have so much work to do. Jacqueline in Paris totally surprised me, loved it. Not always a huge fan of the World War II novel, but this takes place right after the Second World War when a young Jacqueline Bouvier go I have to think about it. Um, a young Jacqueline Bouvier goes to Paris and it's about her year abroad living there. And I thought it was really beautiful. I thought Anne Ma did a really great job researching it and just brought to life a historical figure and a different perspective from her, such a secretive and compartmentalized human being. I just thought she did a great job with the myth that is Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, right? And it touches a little bit on the later stuff, but it really is mostly about her. And I just loved that. So would actually, rec it's great for a book club, I think. Um, I gave this to my uh, aunt who's in her 70s to, for her book club. I was like, y'all will love this. <laughs> and then long as the lemon tree, as long as the lemon tree grows. Wow. That was such a powerful and incredible. It's about the Syrian civil war and the crisis there and um, really intense. Um, I would have to say... I actually think that was my favorite book of that month. Um, just incredibly well-written, but also super intense. Um, I, it's about war, man. Uh, so it's about a young woman who's studying pharmacy, and then she kind of gets pulled into treating uh, people during this war, right? So she can do all of these different things uh, now and is just learning a lot about medicine. And it's about trying to leave and... Uh, she has her sister-in-law with her who's pregnant. She's trying to get her out. And oof, it is devastating, though. I'll be honest. Like, if you read this book, like, be in the right mind space for it. Because um, the ending was really hard. Oh, my God. Like, just thinking about it kind of makes me a little emotional. Like, this book was, like, it's considered young adult. And I see why. Like, you know, all the main characters are, like, under 20 or something. But, oof. I mean, it really brings, like, this author wanted people to, like, remember that this thing has happened, is still happening, and I think that she did an excellent job doing that, and um, I legitimately didn't know how it was going to end, so, um, yeah, that would be my favorite of, I believe this is October, yes. All right, we're really getting into it. Here we go. Okay, The Wilder Women. Okay, uh, We Are the Light, The Last Party, White Horse, and Someday Maybe. All right, I'm just going to say right now, oh, this is such a hard one to actually pick my favorite again. So We Are the Light is written by Matthew Quick, who also wrote Silver Linings Playbook. I'm like, it's a book, it's a title that I have no idea. Like, it, yeah, he also wrote that. Uh, so that's kind of his thing, exploring sort of mental health and mental illness which I think this does really, really well in trauma, which I think does really, really well. I didn't dislike this book, but I found that it was very, 
uh, saccharine at times in a way that I was like, what? And then it also kind of gets into, I use that word a lot and I use it very intentionally because saccharine to me means like, it just means that it's like very sweet to the point of like being a little too rosy eyed glasses, you know, I didn't care for that. Yeah. I just really didn't, it didn't resonate with me. And, but there are times when saccharine actually does work for me. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. I'm just saying in this case, I was like, Ugh. what is it? They come together after a really horrific tragedy. And the point of the book is to kind of reveal what that tragedy is. That plot device is what inherently does not work for me. I don't like it when we're just sitting around waiting for the end, basically. <laughs> that, Cause that's what the book is. Like the end is really intense and really emotional, but to get there, uh, and it's super quick. Like it's a very short book, so you're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but it is epistolary and just le it basically just leaves a lot out, you know, and that is done intentionally through the lens of this person who has gone through a serious trauma, which is very clear from the very beginning and is attempting to kind of cope and understand that. Like it serves a function. Like I'm not saying that it's not well used. I think of that mechanism, this is the best use of that that I have seen. And I think epistolary works really well as well because, you know, the whole way of kind of revealing things as somebody writes it down and experiences them, I think is really cool. I just didn't want to wait around for the end of this book. <laughs> Basically, I just was like, because there's a lot of Jungian psychology in it, which not that I have a problem with Jungian psychology. I just couldn't understand it and didn't, I couldn't understand it and couldn't follow it at times. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. So I, I just grew very impatient and I was like, is, do I, do I need to know a lot about young and psychology? Like what, you know, it was anyway, point is I finished it and I am happy that I finished it. And I had great conversation about it with, uh, the book talk, et cetera, patrons and discord, which is super cool. Loved it. Loved that experience, but I didn't love this book. I think I gave it like three stars. It was fine. Uh, the Wilder Women is fine. It's totally fine. Um, again, if you're somebody who doesn't read a lot of fantasy and wants to read something with fantastical elements in it, this was kind of cool. Um, the main characters have these like special powers that are uh, unique to them, sort of. And... <laughs> Uh, they are looking for their mom and it's a road trip story. And I love a road trip story. I like, a you know, searching for our past kind of story. I very much enjoyed my time with this. I'm pretty sure I gave it like four stars. Uh, I just like Ruth Emmy Lang. I think that she makes characters that are really interesting and likable, but also complicated. So I was happy about that. Not my favorite book this month. <laughs> Claire McIntosh. The last party was cool. So this story takes place on the border of England and Wales and really incorporates the cultural division there. Many of you know the Welsh have their own language and their own kind of history. And yes, they are a part of the United Kingdom, but they, uh, there's also kind of an importance in kind of preserving that, not necessarily anglifying everything, right? And the English like to anglify things. So <laughs> shocker. So the there's that tension with when a body appears in this town that... Um, is kind of like a resorty town. Like there's new developments there and basically cops from both sides. There's a Welsh police officer and an English police officer that had a one night stand. Woo. Uh, they're the ones on the case. And I love that it goes back and forth between their POVs. Delightful and wonderful. Cause they're both like, Oh my God, I hooked up with this person. Oh my God. They're so into me. It's so annoying. They both think that <laughs> it's great. Um, and they also go to the POV of the person who is the body. And it starts like that POV starts right before they die. And as you go through the book, kind of goes back in time and gives you more context for what happened leading up to their death. And this is a series, really cool, very, very cool. I think of the thrillers that I read this year, this is the best one because of the way that it's written. It's a little bit longer too. I would, I actually might, so I got this as uh, an audio from Libro. I don't, I don't get all the book of the month, book through book of the month, yikes. I might actually get this in print and reread it because I really enjoyed it. And I think it'd be fun to read in print. And now that I know how the Welsh things are pronounced, I will know what I'm reading too, which is great. Uh, White Horse, also really good. I really enjoyed White Horse. Uh, it's about a woman who is 
trying to understand what happened to her mother. And uh, she is what she calls an urban Indian. Um, she uses that phrase. And it is, she reads Stephen King. She's like, I don't know. I, I loved it. And she is just dealing with a lot of trauma. She, you know, was a drug addict uh, for a long time and um, is kind of working through that and lost her friend to drug use. And clearly, I think, probably loved this woman more than she, it, it, they don't, I don't think that this character is LGBT, but I, I don't know. It, I don't know. <laughs> there were times when I was like, I think she actually might be into her friend. Like their love meant more than when she's, you know, in these other romantic relationships that she has. And just, yeah, I don't know. I just, again, I just enjoyed my time with it. Uh, I thought it was dark, gritty, uh, interesting, cool. And then someday maybe, oof, that book was a gut punch. Again, a really um, impactful and powerful opening. If you don't want to listen to somebody talk about grief for the whole book, then don't read this book because uh, that's all it is. Um, and it's all about the her husband's suicide. So if that's going to be a problem. Yeah. And she has this intensely contentious relationship with his mother. And uh, some things happen that kind of try to pull her out of her grief and it's just the story of grief I love grief stories that's not so weird but it's true I love how resilient people can be and how much we love and this talks about that like how much we love somebody even when things are really complicated and I loved the family characters in this a lot um yeah I don't know I just loved I listened to this and I thought it was a great listen I don't know I just I thought it was really beautiful damn this is gonna be a tough one I don't know. Honestly, it could have been, it really could be either the last party white horse or someday maybe. <sighs> I really don't know. Oh God. Uh, this is actually, this is the hardest month to pick because I really, I read all of these back to back and I loved all three of them. They were just banger after banger. So I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to flip a coin. Okay. So heads it's last party. tails all right someday maybe <laughs> it really is that close someday maybe was the best all right now we're here for the le final le finale uh the light pirate circus train all the dangerous things babble and kiss her once for me light pirate w like uh, by a long shot was the best book that i read last month a thousand million percent character driven cli-fi i love cli-fi is climate change fiction um, it, uh, basically is about a woman, a young girl who is born during this horrific storm. And, um, it is about her living with her family through the apocalypse, essentially, like through climate change and how that impacts where she lives in Florida. And it's about her life and sort of what she experiences and, the people that are in her life and how the world changes around her. And I am obsessed with it. I absolutely loved it. I want to read it again. Um, I read the physical copy and I kind of want to buy the audio and listen to it again. <laughs> the circus train was great. Uh, it's a little sweet, but not too sweet. Thankfully it's essentially about a young girl with polio who uh, is raised by her father, who is an illusion illusionist illusionist and he is very protective of her it kind of goes into like her living with polio in this particular time period which is during the rise of the third reich because uh basically the the very beginning of the book takes place right after kristallnacht um, so then that's when a young boy comes to them and kind of enters their lives and it's, there's like romance and travel and circus things. And it was, I was not looking forward to it. And then I read, it, I was like, this is actually pretty good. I kind of, I mean, I, it's a great book to read in the winter. It, I thought it was a cool Christmas book. Like, even though it has nothing to do with Christmas, uh, you know, it feels very holiday -y, I guess. I don't know. Um, and it spans, uh, an extended period of time. Family secrets are revealed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it was good. Uh, all the dangerous things. I liked this better than her first book. Uh, a flicker in the dark had a really like unrealistic <laughs> MC to me. I was like, I mean, that's not true. I'm sure that person does exist, you know, or could exist, but I just was like, 
whatever. Uh, I was not invested in her journey. Uh, this one, I was invested in her journey again, an unlikable main character who's really going through it and not coping well, which was cool. I actually liked that about this. Um, and the ending was like, I wanted to get to the end. I wanted to know the result of this mystery. Uh, her son is abducted and it starts a year, literally a year to the day after. And she's approached by a man to be on his podcast. He does a true crime podcast and it kind of goes from there. And, um, I like a book that has a podcast and I don't know why I like, I like books that kind of um, that have television in them, like where the characters are on a TV show or the podcast thing. I don't know why I like that, but I like it. Um, I preferred this over her other one, like I already said, and, but there wasn't anything like, it's not like the most book I've ever read all, you know, the month. Like I read so many other things. Uh, but I think that if you're somebody who likes a good mystery, um, it was not, I mean, it's, they call it a thriller. I don't know about, I don't know about calling this a thriller, it was more mystery to me. Um, and, and again, propulsive. I wanted to get to the end and figure it out. Babel. Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic historical, uh, fantasy. Um, I don't think it goes too hard on the fantasy. And again, that's like kind of my biggest criticism of it. I wanted to see more of the magic. Um, but that's just cause I like magic and I just wanted to see more of it. Um, this is about a man who as a boy is taken from his home country. His mother passes and again, he's kind of taken in and sort of civilized. He's taken from what is called Canton at that time. Um, and uh, his guardian um, is horrible to him and is abusive and wants him to become a translator at Babel, which is part of Oxford. It's not really a part of Oxford, but for the sake of this book, it is. Um, and as a translator, he starts to realize that the only reason he's been taken in and sort of shaped and wielded is to become a tool for uh, the, uh, British colonialism to essentially like take over, uh, and use people from those cultures that speak those languages, uh, to help make their magic stronger. Cause the magic system in this is based on language and how things are translated and how that impacts, uh, things with the silver bar. So this, this is really a story about colonialism. And I think it does an incredible job talking about race, um, and essentially like the caste system of race, uh, that, I think Americans unfortunately perfected. I'm also reading cast by Isabel Wilkerson. So I'm like really, uh, that was actually a cool kind of pairing of these two books. Um, I just like the light fire wrote more. Sorry. I just, I thought Babel was great. There's nothing wrong with it. I think I gave it five stars. Um, I just love the light fire. Um, yeah. And the, Babel is, is long, but I think it earns its length. And I think that, um, I'm really glad that book of the month picked it. Oh uh, yeah. So, uh, and the kisser ones for me, I did not care for, I was annoyed, uh, throughout most of this. This is the thing. This is just me. I want more sapphic romances where the main character is, has a sense of humor. <laughs> like this one. And also, uh, one last stop. The main characters do not have a very like pronounced sense of humor. I got most of the joy from side characters and I want that to be the main character. Like it just, it's always like this character is so like just riddled with anxiety. And I'm like, I've already, that is already me. Like, I don't, I don't want to live in that anymore. <laughs> like I want to escape that, you know? Um, and it just didn't work for me. Um, it wasn't all bad. Uh, there's funny moments to it. It, it is like a holiday romance, which was fun. And I do like, um, but at the end, like there, it, it, this is based off of a miscommunication that I thought was just, I did not care for it. I didn't like the way that was handled. Um, and I kind of don't like the idea of the two people getting together in the end, which is terrible to say, like not because they're bad people, but because I'm like, I mean, if you can't be honest about this one, like, do you deserve anything? I don't know. Like, and the author talks about how this book is really a book about failure, which I thought was cool. I just wish it wasn't in a sapphic holiday romance. So yeah, again, I'm, I don't want to trash this book. Cause like, I want more books that are sapphic romances and that are holiday books. Like I want more of that. I think I was so hyped that it just <sighs> deflated me. So those are all of the book of the months and how I felt about all of them. If you notice, I didn't DNF as many as I thought. So of the light pirate someday, maybe 
Uh, as long as the lemon tree grows, attic child. Wow, this is going to be tough. Devil takes you home tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. The lies I tell. Yerba Buena. And True Biz. And The Verifiers. And Peach Blossom Spring. And Love and Other Disasters. I would say my favorite of all of these books, of those 12. Wow, that's gonna be really hard. Oh my God. I don't think I can rank them, I'll be honest. I don't think I can do that. Um, right now, sitting here on January 7th of 2023, the one that I feel I would want to go back and read and kind of dive even more into uh, is probably Attic Child. I just have to be real about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say Attic Child was my top. With Love and Other Disasters is a very close second. Again, I don't want to, I don't want it to just be the drama, the dramatic books that, you know, are like the best. Um, oh, man. Yeah, let's call it a tie. That with uh, Love and Other Disasters because, like, um, I really, truly enjoyed how these pe these two people fell in love. Um, I found it funny. I found it irreverent. I found it to be, um, I don't know, just, like, I would go back and reread this book. And I want to read more from this author. And I feel the same way about Attic Child, where I'm like, I would go back and reread it, and I want to read more from this author. So I'm going to say that that is, like, the criteria for making it, like, the best of the best for me. Yeah. So that's that. Again, I don't think I am going to uh, do this again. I don't know. Maybe I will. Should I? I have no idea. I kind of am thinking, if you're still here watching this, I'm kind of thinking that this year... Uh, I just want to make more random videos about things I'm reading and how I feel about them. Yeah, that's all I really have until the next one. I've been here for a while, so you don't need to hear from me anymore. If you are, tell me about, like, are you a fan of Book of the Month? Are you going to try reading all of them? Uh, what other book subscriptions do you use? You know, let's talk about it. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye!